Hey y'all. Um, just hope your week is going well so far on this first day of Lent, um, Ash Wednesday. And I wanted to share this blessing with you to begin with, and it's called a blessing before a fast. Blessed are you, ready to open yourself to a new joy, a doorway that until now has been hidden. In this culture of acquisition and gain, blessed are you who desire fresh ears to hear what might be a bit too loud, who take the next step to turn it down a notch and make more space for God, who discipline yourself with time, intention, and hope, anticipating God to show up in your discomfort, trusting that when we need God, God promises to be there. God, give me courage, give me strength, give me hunger for you. Let this set time of less be a chance for more of you. Let this fast be an entrance into the discernment I desire, the divine presence I'm longing for, and the hope to will what you will, O oh God, to be who you've called me to be. Now, I know not everyone has something that they fast for during Lent, or fast from, I should say. Um, but I know a lot of people do. I usually fast from something during Lent to focus on God and how he sent his son to be a sacrifice for us and what that means, what the gospel means. And just thinking about this time, it's like, you know, we're taking time to like step away a little bit to be able to quiet the world around us to do something that maybe we usually use as a distraction or just to waste time and taking that away and taking that time intentionally to put back into our relationship with God, our relationship with others, right? So I was thinking about this, you know, when we think about fasting from something or we're like, oh, I just, I just need to cut out sugar or chocolate. So when we cut out cold turkey and we don't have a plan, usually that plan falls apart, or at least for me it does. Um, or like the idea of cutting it out falls apart. Um, but when I have a plan for something or I have goals or I have like enough discipline or um, stubbornness behind what I wanna do, then it seems to kind of work out, right? So. If we're like, oh, we're going to fast from this, but I don't intentionally decide what I'm going to replace that with, then it's probably not going to last the whole time of Lent, right? So as we head into the season of Lent, I'm thinking about like slowing down, taking some of that busyness out. Maybe you're going to fast from something like I was talking about. Um, and then talking about prayer or church this year is focusing on prayer during Lent as we have our Thursdays time uh, where we are specifically praying at that time every week on Thursday. Um, and with that, we're talking about seeking God with a gospel-centered heart and mind, right? That's what we've been talking about this year. And so as I was thinking about this season and we've been talking about um, the upcoming sabbatical and taking time for rest is just like what has been on my heart and mind is like how am I living my life with intention I had surgery a couple weeks ago and I've spent a lot of time laying here recovering because that's all I could do and I'm like thinking through all of these things more right um and so as I'm thinking of these things like what are the things that I am intentionally doing for God? What are the things that I'm spending my time on? Because I sometimes think about all the things that I need to prioritize in my work life. Like I need to get these emails sent out by this time. I need to put my hours in by this day. I need to make sure these people turn these things in by this day. Um, trying to get scheduled for more work for subbing like there's all these things that I can think about or like I need to get all the stuff ready for if like what do I need to get lined up but I also think about oh I should have coffee with this person oh I should do this oh I should all these oh I shoulds and then I don't put the plan in action right it stays up in my head like and I'm like oh I need to do that but thinking about 
intentionality and being with others like we look back into like our verses right um in hebrews 10 or the women's ministry thing verse verses of let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together as it is habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near Right, we're supposed to be intentionally seeking out time together, intentionally wanting to be in community with one another. And as we're thinking about those things, uh, maybe God has been laying a certain person on your heart to reach out to, uh, maybe a certain thing for you to get involved with, um, or to be doing more of, right? Some of us have all those nagging thoughts in our head of God's pushing on us, but then we're like, I don't know, do I really have the time? Do I really want to take the energy to do that? But if God is laying it in your heart and your mind, do it, right? We all have that fear, and that fear sometimes outweighs our faith and our trust in God to do it but it's worth it, right? So when I first was even think, God started playing, planting uh, my, planting thoughts in my mind of like women's ministry things, I was like, oh God, we've talked about this. I don't really hang out with women. I like doing youth ministry stuff. I like being outside and taking kids on rafting trips and doing all of that. And God kept pushing on my heart and was like, no, like, you can do this. And I have prepared you to do this and to lead in a different way um, and to just trust me. And so out of all my fear and out of my all my questions, I jumped in. And I will say, I don't feel like I always know what I'm doing, but what I do is I pray what... Bible study should I do? What um, event should we have or not? Like what women um, should I make sure to invite to things? And I just keep seeking God and he gives me the answers, right? Um, but I think then also sometimes we have those bigger prayers, right? And as we're thinking about this time of prayer, I think about all those unanswered prayers, right? We have those big unanswered prayers that we're just like, God, I don't know how you're gonna make this happen, right? How do we, I don't I don't even know. And I've had those, and I've had um, a lot of medical issues um, since I was in middle school. Over 20 years, I've had some issues, and the surgery that I had could be the answer to some of those. And I can remember all those nights of pleading with God, like, God, take this pain away. God, I just don't know that I can keep living with this. And then another chronic pain hit me. God, I don't know that I can keep going like this. How do I live my life for you when I'm just in pain and I don't have the energy, I don't have the ability to walk, to stand, to be with people. And through this time, I'm like, man, God, work these things out and this could be the answer I was looking for. But even so, if not, I will keep pursuing God and keep pursuing people because that is what he's called us to do, right? And we've heard different sermons in this first part of the year talking about our mission statement as a church to be a church that's centered on the gospel, right? And what all that means. And Tom talked about being a disciple. What does that mean? That means living life with people intentionally and just being there for people. No matter if you have been following Jesus for 50 years, 30 years, three months, you have a story. You have a story of what God is doing in your life and in your heart and has done and what you're hoping for him to do and you still have things to learn and to grow into. No matter how young or young at heart you are, God has 
a story that he's been writing in you and that's what it takes to disciple and to be in someone else's life is to be able to share what God's done in your life and to listen to what is going on in someone else's life because that's how we build relationships that's how we build trust that's how we build safety within our community is being able to listen to people and hear them out and point them to God and that's what we are called to do right and we are called to not only help each other out that already know God we are called to go out into our community and reach those who don't know God and we see our youth group and the landing starting to explode right those kids in middle school and high school are going out and say hey come to youth group learn about this guy Jesus and they just keep growing right what what are we doing to be the hands and feet of Jesus as adults I know I could do more I know that sometimes I get nervous still about like hey you know Jesus or do you not like because I feel like sometimes I'm just like I don't know how people are always going to react when I say that I'm a Christian right because there's so many people who are Christians or claim to be Christians that aren't following Jesus well and loving others well and I just want us to be known as a church that loves people well that welcomes people in and wants to welcome in those new believers right and if we are praying during this time of Lent for a revival or for us to really get the gospel out there we have to be prepared for when those people come right preparing our hearts and I just always go back to thinking about Matthew 28 as has been sh um, shared in sermons lately of go therefore uh, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Son and of the Father and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age God says go don't just stay at home and watch TV or play games or be within your circle. God has people in our lives that we interact with through sports games, through committees we're on, through different events that we go to, that we run into these same people all the time. But do we ever talk to them about God? And so in this time of Lent, and we're praying, I want you to really think about what could I be doing to further the gospel? What can I be doing to grow in my relationship with God? Um, and asking God to have the, uh, to give you the courage to take those next steps, to um, take that leap of faith and do what he's asking you to do and trusting that He's asking you to do it for a reason, right? He doesn't just ask you to do it and then things explode, right? Well, things might explode, but God is asking you to step out in faith. I encourage you to do so. And if you're struggling to step out in those things, grab someone to bring along with you in that thing or to pray along with you and if you don't know anyone to do that with, reach out to me. I would love to talk to you, pray with you, or help you find someone to be in relationship with to help you and pray along those ways. So my challenge to you today and throughout this season, pray with intentionality, live with an intentionality, seeking God and seeking relationship with others. See you all soon.